Hey everyone, it's Ergo Josh and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to teach you guys a really, really cool way to generate advanced color palettes for your work almost automatically. This has been super, super helpful for helping me understand colors. As you guys know, I don't really draw with color too much or paint with color, but I'm trying to get better at it. And I found that using color palettes has been super helpful. Before we jump in, I just want to let you guys know that this video has been sponsored by CGMA. So before I really got into this color palette thing, I tried color picking and I know that's kind of taboo in the art community, but you'll see here, this is what I did. I decided to paint Yeji here and I think it came out pretty good, but it was really, really frustrating. This is the reference I used and it wasn't, I felt like I was learning a little bit, but it felt too constrained. And so halfway through it, I kind of discovered this way to use color palettes to really help me move a lot faster with this piece. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly how to do it right now. All you need is an image reference, either an image that, like this one that you're just going to straight up draw or paint as a study or something that you want to reference for maybe it's just the colors. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring down my file browser here and I'm going to pick an image that has a lot of really interesting colors and drag it here and open it in Photoshop. And it's got some, if we zoom in here, you can see it's got some like cool blues and uh, some cyans and uh, reds in here that would be really fun to paint. So how do we actually create a color palette from this in Photoshop? Well, all you got to do is go to file, then go to export and then save for web. And what that's going to do is create a GIF. Now, I don't really know much about GIFs, but I know that you can animate them and I know that they have a limited amount of colors and therefore they have a very small file size. And so that's basically what this feature is for. It's up for creating an image that allows you to have a very small size and a limited amount of colors. And as you can see here, it has 64 colors that it generated for us for something that looks pretty, pretty close to the original. So as artists, what we're going to do is we're going to change the amount of color so that we can actually use it as a helpful color palette, right? Because usually what you're going to see online is most color palettes are going to have five or four colors, which isn't really that helpful. So let's actually take a look at it. Let's start at two colors, right? This is really, really crazy. It still looks pretty cool, right? But it's just a two tone kind of thing. And if we bring it up to four colors, now it's really interesting. We've got this nice transition from this reddish color to like this purple all the way to these blues, right? Um, which is something that isn't really how it looks in the real image, but it's still really cool and interesting to look at. And if we take it to eight, we've started to get that really nice intensity in those reds, right? And we're starting to see those like subtle green tones that we see here in the reference. And if we bring it to 16, here it looks really, really nice. There's some images that will look better at 16 colors. Some images will really look good at 64 colors some images will look really good at 32 256 depending they'll look and when i say really good they'll look basically just like the um, reference but just play with it i tend to not really care and i'll show you in a second why i don't so the cool thing with this is that after we have the setting after we pick our colors we can actually change a lot of other settings that are really cool so Photoshop gives you these different ways to kind of calculate how to generate these colors. And one of my favorite to pick is adaptive and it kind of gives a more realistic, smoother effect than usually what these other ones do. And then diffusion basically allows you to kind of take another step and create a posterized effect where all the colors are going to be really, really, you know, chunky and close together and not really smoothed out. You're not going to see any individual pixels. So if I zoom in here, you can see all these, this tone of red and this tone is all chunked together like that, right? But if I turn on dither or diffusion, you can see it's basically blended together. Same amount of colors, but just blended together and it gives you a much, much, much nicer effect, right? Almost looks just like the original if you zoom out far enough. So what I like to do is I actually like to set the colors to eight usually because my workflow is if I can look at this reference, right? And think about what color should I pick in order to paint whatever area, even if I have this limited range of eight colors, I'm still using my brain to think and process what I see versus what I see into an actual color that exists on my monitor, right? And so you're still training your mind to start seeing color in a very logical way instead of just seeing it and thinking that's red, that's orange, that's black, that's white, right? It's like maybe this is a warm gray, light gray. This is a very, very um, kind of medium gray with a slight blue tinge to it that makes it look green, right? That's the kind of stuff that you want to start thinking about. And so I find when you limit yourself to just these eight colors, it's easy to start that process and it's just a lot less daunting. It's like 
color was so difficult for me to kind of think about but when i just thought of color palettes that are just like 8 16 colors like in size it starts to get really easy and i start to really feel like i can actually approach this thing which is the key to growing so you actually want to feel like you can actually do it or else you're not going to do it and then you'll end up like me avoiding color for a little bit too long and then you know whatever you'll eventually make the time back so once you've decided what you want, you can actually go ahead, and this is what's really cool about Photoshop, guys. You can click this color palette menu here, and then you can sort them by hue, luminance, and popularity. Popularity basically means how common does this color appear? How often does this color appear in the image? So if I pick popularity, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be blue first, right? It's gonna be this blue first, but if I pick sort by luminance, you're going to see it's this really dark all the way to the lightest color you're going to see like this part on um, this part of her jacket here so that's really cool and then you can go ahead and export this color table save the color table and then bring it back into photoshop and then save it as a swatch which you can bring into all kinds of different softwares like clip studio for example once you do that, you can just bring in the image and use your color swatch and just focus on that swatch with eight colors or 16 colors and then just paint away, you know, looking at the original reference, looking at this reference if you want, because believe it or not, you can save this GIF and it will just be there for you to use just like I did with this right here. You can see that this one, it looks quite a bit different. It doesn't have those rich oranges, right? It doesn't have the rich reds in her bracelet, but overall it's still a really good balance of colors. It's still balanced. It still has a nice feel to it. And I would be proud if I could paint this, right? So that's what I did. This is about eight colors, I believe. And I used that to paint the under, you know, most of it. And then I started to say, okay, I just need to find some oranges. I need to find some pinks here. And then it just comes, you know, starts to look really good. and. I'm studying stuff and I'm making my own observations on top of what I've learned from the color palette. So CG Master Academy is an online learning platform for artists, which is awesome because you can learn from industry professionals around the world, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. And they can teach you things for motion graphics and film, just traditional illustration or digital illustration alone. There's so much stuff that you can learn here that you can also learn in a brick and mortar school, which would obviously be way more expensive. But here you can actually get feedback, recorded videos for what you do, um, step by, you know, get a planned course for eight weeks and then you can actually take multiple courses and get a certificate even at the end if you choose a certain degree path or you can just take individual classes at your own pace it's awesome i took my own three courses before i even you know was sponsored by them and it was awesome i've told you guys a lot about it as i was taking it and some of you were actually in the classes with me so i highly highly recommend it and definitely uh, think you should check them out if you want to take things a little bit more seriously as we're getting into you know the end of this year so that's going to be it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's super helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. It's been super, super helpful for me. I'm even generating my own color palettes for my own thing. I can show you guys a second <laughs> here. Don't 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 mind this. Right. Look, look at look at this one. This one's a lot. This one's a lot better. Right. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. I, I am kind of working on my own kind of pink color palette I might share with you guys in the future, but it's been really, really cool. I feel a lot more confident with colors uh, moving forward. So I definitely think that it's going to help you guys out. Um, and yeah, uh, if you want to, you know, ask me more questions about this or anything else, you should check me out on Twitch. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and keep drawing. Peace.